Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca, otherwise known as Hypnit Hooray Online, and this is my 2023 knitting wrapped video. So this video is going to follow a similar format to um, everyone's favorite 2023 Spotify wrapped. I was really inspired by Emily of High Fiber Knits who just did a little bit of a 2023 wrapped video and also uh, Rachel of Anthro Knits on Instagram created a Instagram story highlight where you could um, spotlight some of your uh, favorite projects, yarn, uh, designers and I thought these were really great ideas because I am going to be filming a everything I made in 2023 or my 2023 knits but that video I anticipate is going to be a very long video and there may not be an opportunity for uh, nuances like this or, or a way to really distinguish like what your top favorite um, projects were. I also have some other categories that I guess wouldn't really fit in that video like um, my favorite podcasters, my favorite designers, new to me podcasters, new to me designers, my favorite tools, things like that. So I have quite a few categories uh, or highlights to get into. I'm going to include timestamps below so hopefully you can follow along or maybe click through to certain things that interest you but let's just get started. My top garment this year is my zipper sweater by Petite Knit. This is a project that I made um, earlier on in the year, in the, in the winter, and I finished it uh, in the springtime. This piece is just so versatile. I wear it in many different contexts. It just works perfectly for anything for me. Uh, I wore it for its intended purpose as a jacket in the spring and the fall, so just um, layering it as I head out of my apartment. But also it works in so many different contexts. I can wear it over trousers at work. I've worn it over uh, dresses, skirts, jeans, formally, casually. It just really works for anything. So I really like it. I really liked the uh, yarn choice and color. I use like a lighter gray yarn with a darker mohair and it just adds a lot of dimension uh, to the garment. And I also learned a lot of new techniques. Um, in this piece. I learned about how to do afterthought pockets, um, how to do a double knit button band, and also a placket for a zipper, sewing in a zipper. So definitely was um, maybe not my favorite project to work up because there was some complexities in it, but uh, still my, my top piece overall. My top accessory had to, of course, be a knitted ornament. This year, I really dove headfirst into knitting all the ornaments for myself and, and for my friends and family. I think in total, I knit around 20 or maybe like 25 ornaments. So I, I really <laughs> uh, invested my time into that in the fall and the winter time. And my favorite out of all of them has to be the Tiny Little Donut by Julie Williams. These are the two that I made for my tree, um, but I also made some and gifted them to my sister. Uh, and they were just really fun to work up. I used scrap yarn for both of them, but I learned a lot of new techniques in this project as well. Um, I learned how to um, do a proper mattress stitch <laughs> to attach these pieces together, how to um, stuff a project, how to sew on beads. So it was a really fun project to work up and it's definitely my favorite. I'm really proud of these. These are ornaments that I always like to show <laughs> when um, people hear that I've knitted my, my ornaments for my tree. So definitely a favorite this year. And I don't know if I could classify this as an accessory. I, I am, it's like an accessory to my tree. <laughs> Um, but yeah, totally my favorite this year. My favorite color this year has definitely been the fuchsia that made its way around Knitstagram earlier in the summer. Uh, I knit a bright hot pink Marseille sweater in the summer. Uh, and I don't know why, like I, I don't really wear a lot of pink to be honest. I'm more of a cool tone person. I like my blues, greens and grays, but when I saw this color, I was just very inspired and it definitely has to do with the Summer of Pop knit along that was hosted by The Knitting Page and Abigail Makes Stuff on Instagram. And I they both have YouTube channels as well. I'll link them down below because they made a few projects as well in like a hot pink fuchsia color. Um, 
yeah, this color is definitely a big favorite of mine. I love wearing this sweater. It's just such a um, fun pop of color and it just adds so much like warmth and joy to my wardrobe of mainly neutral colors. Uh, and to be honest, I do get a lot of compliments when I wear this piece. So I, maybe that also plays into why I really enjoy uh, wearing this color and, and knitting with this color. But yeah, this fuchsia hot pink was definitely the summer, the color of the year for me. The next category I want to talk about is designers. So here I want to make a bit of a distinction between maybe my top designer and my favorite designer. It's kind of like with a Spotify wrapped, your um, top songs or um, top artists may not be reflective of your favorite, I guess, artist or song. So I just want to give that little disclaimer because my top designer is none other than Petite Knit. Uh, I'm sure that's come as no surprise because probably a lot of other knitters uh, Petite Knit is is their top designer as well. Um, I just really like all of her designs. They're very classic and simple silhouettes. Um, and I just know that when I knit that project, it's definitely going to be wearable for me. Like as you can see, my um, zipper sweater and Marseille sweater, or did I say sweater? My zipper jacket and my Marseille sweater are by Petite Knit. This sweater that I'm wearing now, the October sweater is also by Petite Knit. I just, they end up being probably my most worn pieces. I know my size, so I can just stick to that and I know the fit is gonna turn out. Um, I also am pretty similar to Gage when with her project, so there's not a lot of adjustments that I need to make. Uh, and I just really like her, her pattern writing style. So I knew Petite Knit was going to be my favorite designer, but I didn't realize how many projects I made from her. So this year I made eight projects from her designs. I made the Cumulus blouse, the zipper jacket, the Sophie shawl, the Marseille sweater, the Teddy pillow, the Cumulus tee, uh, the April cardigan, and the Holly bow. Yeah, it kind of shocked me how many designs I actually made from her and it, it's probably going to just continue. Um, to be honest, um, I, I know that some people might think that she is a bit overrated, which yeah, maybe, maybe a tad, but I think for good reason or there, there's a reason why it's people are um, loving her designs, including myself, because I just like how they always turn out. That being said, um, so Petite Knit was my top designer, but my favorite designer was Ozetta. I made four designs from Ozetta this year. I made the port sweater, my air tee, lakes tee, and earth pullover, um, but I knit quite a few of her patterns last year as well. Uh, all of these were actually test knits for her because I love testing for Haley. She's just a kind and gentle soul, and she's just, I really like the way that she writes her patterns. I like the patterns, so naturally I always want to apply to test knit her patterns. Um, and the reason why Haley is my favorite designer is she designs really timeless and elevated basics. Um, a lot of her uh, patterns are a little bit more simple, like they're, they're stockinette, but they feature really fun construction techniques, which is why I think that they're a little bit more elevated to knit them. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at the air tee construction, there's that fun panel at the back, uh, the lakes pullover, there's the uh, saddle shoulder, the mile shirt jacket has the fun curved hem. There's just those nice fun um, design details that make it really engaging to, to knit and you end up learning something new. I always learn something a little bit different from, from her designs and think that it's, it's very clever. Um, Second is I also really like the way that her patterns are formatted. She has very helpful um, tutorials that she makes. A lot of them are specific to the pattern as well. So it's easier to visualize what exactly is happening in the moment with that design and how to apply it using that video, which I find is always really helpful for, for context, especially for more beginner knitters. Um, I think that the patterns are a little bit more detailed than other patterns. There are um, more explanations, which I think are really helpful. She includes like some helpful tips uh, or notes throughout the process, like where to pick up stitches, um, how to pick up stitches. There's also some really great um, image or schematics that she includes as well. Like I was mentioning, because they're more elevated basics, they have the interesting construction technique. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to visualize, but she includes these um, schematics in the, the pattern, which make it easier to follow along. 
And the last reason why I really like her pattern writing style is at the end of some major milestones or sections like the back panels, the front panels, the sleeves, she includes both a row count and also a measurement for those sections, which I think is really helpful because for me, um, I'm usually off gauge when I knit Haley's patterns. My row gauge is always off. It's always a little bit larger uh, than, than Haley's, so it's helpful to see what the measurement should be, and I just kind of go off of that rather than row gauge. Some designers, they can just include the row gauge, and if you are off gauge, then you end up having to do some adjustments or measurements, so there's uh, less thinking and more relaxing <laughs> uh, that's involved with, with knitting her projects. Okay, moving on to a new designer that I discovered this year, and that's Emma of Emma's Knits. So I first came across Emma's Instagram through her Clematis sweater, which is the first design that she ever came out with. It is a um, drop shoulder sweater with a diagonal button band, or yeah, I guess you could say a button band. A, diag yeah, a diagonal button band at the front that's meant to be worn closed, so it is more of a sweater rather than a cardigan. I thought that was just such a great design. It was her first design as well. Um, I have plans to knit it. I've had plans since the fall to knit it, but definitely will try to knit it next year. Um, so yeah, I, I first came across her through that sweater design. And then I ended up uh, testing for her. So I was part of the Selen Top test knit. I know I probably shouldn't get into the analytics or read too much into it, but the Selen Top is one of my most liked photos. And so I think other knitters definitely liked the design as well. Um, and I only had the Selen Top, so I can only speak to that pattern, but it is also written very clearly. I really like the writing style. It's very easy to follow along to. And similarly to um, Ozetta, there are schematics in uh, the pattern as well, make, which make it very um, simple and more relaxing to knit when you can kind of understand the construction a little bit more through those images. My top construction technique this year was definitely the saddle shoulder. Um, I think it was through my lakes pullover, which I knit in 2022. I realized that I really like the fit of saddle shoulders. Uh, and just the, the amount of ease that you can get without getting all of that bulk along the, the shoulders. So I made it kind of a mission this year to experiment with different types of saddle shoulder techniques. And I did get that on um, the three that I knit this year, I knit three saddle sh shoulder designs. So the Lakes Tee, my April Cardigan and my Frankie Genzer. And through all of those, they are all constructed in a slightly different way. Uh, and I learned a lot about the fit of saddle shoulders through them and it was a nice little experiment. I like how saddle shoulders can be contiguous and you're knitting the sleeves at the same time as the body because with drop shoulders, I kind of struggle or it's maybe my least favorite part of knitting garments to pick up the um, stitches along the um, edge. So I like how with um, some saddle shoulder techniques like the lakes pullover is not like this. Um, the arm or sleeve stitches are already there and you just put them back on your needle and you can start knitting right away. I really like that. And like I said, I really like how it fits along the shoulder. It's a little bit more fitted here, which I enjoy. So you don't have all that bulk, but then you can still end up with more positive ease, which is how I like my garments by just casting on more stitches at the underarm. So I really enjoyed that construction uh, this year. And now moving on to techniques. So this is another category where I separated between my top technique and my favorite technique because my top technique was eye cords, <laughs> which again kind of surprised me because eye cords are not necessarily my favorite technique to work, but I used it quite a bit this year. I knit seven projects with eye cords. I knit my cumulus blouse, Sophie Shawl, Air Tea, Selene Top, T twin flower camisole, cumulus tea, and holly bow, which all feature eye cords. And they're all different types of eye cords. Some of them are eye cord bind offs, eye cord cast ons, applied eye cord, a separate eye cord as a strap. So it definitely was a common theme and my top technique that I used in all of my projects this year. It's not my favorite to work up. I do find it a little bit tedious. Uh, and I find that sometimes it's hard to get tensioning right with eye cord, but maybe I'm a little bit particular with that. If I see like a loose stitch, I end up ripping back the eye cord to make it even again. So it's not really the fastest technique um, that I've done and yeah, not the most enjoyable, but I do really like the look of it. It creates more of a simple finish 
and I think that they were quite popular this year. And my favorite technique was a double knitted button band. So I did two this year. I did the double knit button band with the zipper placket for my zipper jacket. And then most recently with my April cardigan. And I just really love how the button bands have both turned out. I just think it looks so professional, like dare I say, like store-bought. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to copy like or make my knitwear look store-bought, uh, but it just, what I'm trying to say is it looks really professional uh, and it's just a really nice clean finish. It's kind of funny though, because I said that I don't enjoy working I-cord and I think knitting uh, double knit button bands are more of a slog and slower, much slower to knit than I-cord because you're knitting each row twice. Um, but I just think that they're so worth the, the effort that you put into them and they just look so great in the end. So that was definitely um, my favorite technique that I worked uh, this year and I'm glad that I learned it and practiced it so I can apply it moving forward in 2024. And now moving on to the yarn. So my top yarn this year was Drops Kid Silk. Um, so I just took one from my yarn shelf. So if there is a bit of a shift in how it looks, I had to rummage through it. <laughs> but this is Drops Kid Silk right here in the shade Off-White. Uh, and this was the top yarn that I used this year. I used it in five projects. My Sophie Shawl, Zipper Jacket, Cumulus Blouse, Marseille Sweater, and Earth Pullover. So this came as quite a bit of a surprise to me that I used it in five projects, or I guess I don't know why I was surprised because I knew I had quite a bit of Drops Kid Silk in stash to use. Uh, it's just not my favorite mohair to work with. Um, and I'll probably get into that a little bit more in my Everything I Knit in 2023 video where I go through the, the projects. Um, but yeah, it's not my favorite to work with, but it is a pretty affordable mohair to use. And there are quite a few uh, colors in their color range. so. It's a good um, staple mohair to have on hand and clearly I used it a lot this year. My favorite yarn this year was the uh, Loops and Threads Cozy Wool Merino. I was a little bit surprised I didn't use it in more projects. I used it in three, so my Downtown Hoodie, my Earth Pullover, and my Christmas Toadstools. I used the yarn scraps from my Earth Pullover for that. And then this is the red color that I'm planning to cast on. I've brought up this yarn a few times now uh, to make my sweater number 20. I just really like the yarn. It's another more affordable yarn similar to Drops Kit Silk. Um, this is a mix of merino and acrylic. Uh, just trying to find the composition here. I've said it a few times but I always forget. It's 55% superwash merino and 45% acrylic. So yeah, a merino acrylic blend. It's probably like not the highest quality or uh, most luxurious yarn. I don't enjoy it. It's not my favorite yarn for that reason. Uh, I just, it's a, um, it's a really nice, like affordable yarn. So it's $12 for 375 meters and you can often get it on sale. It's pretty readily available for me because you can purchase it at Michael's. Um, and I really like the finished pieces. I knit my um, lakes pullover and my highland slipover um, with this yarn last year and those have been uh, great closet staples that I've had. The yarn has held up really well. It doesn't pill. Um, it has nice drape to it. It does grow quite a bit because it's super wash merino so just keep that in mind if you do use this yarn but it's just a really nice reliable yarn that I have and it's it's pretty affordable so I would say it's my favorite yarn this year. All right, and now moving on to tools. I just have two favorite tools, not really top tools because it's kind of hard to quantify, I guess, how often you use these. I wasn't really checking off or writing down or tallying how many times I used them. I think that would be a little bit silly and obviously totally unnecessary. So I'm just saying that these are my favorite tools. So the first one um, is my Lika Driftwood 12 inch circular needles. Um, I've had these for a while. I just bought the largest size, which is the five millimeter. I think maybe they have a 5.5 or maybe this is their largest needle size they make in um, a 12 inch circular. But I bought that this year to complete my overall collection because I use these for almost 
every garment project that I knit um, this year. So I will pull one out right now to show you. I just keep them in my uh, in the packaging because with Lika they don't um, etch the um, needle size onto the needle. So it, some of them have kind of started to wear away. So I just keep the packaging to keep track of the sizing. So these are 12 inch circulars. They work great for knitting sleeves. Um, obviously you don't need to use these. Before I was using um, 16 inch circulars or magic loop, but I don't really like magic loop at, at all actually. So these were worth the investment to me to just continue to work in the round. It really speeds up the knitting process. I enjoy it more. Um, and uh, these are a little bit more affordable than some of the other ones that are out there. I know Chowgu does 12 inch circulars. These are around um, $10 um, at my local yarn store and I got these from a uh, Etsy seller. I think that was based out of um, BC. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty readily available and they are a total game changer for me while knitting sleeves. Um, as most sleeves that I'm starting to knit are more fitted, they might be a little bit more difficult to fit on a 12 inch circular as that, that circumference will be smaller, but I'll find a way to still make these work because they work great for sleeves. And my next favorite tool is my Yarn Swift. So I don't really knit a ton of uh, yarn that comes in hank form, uh, but what I was using this Yarn Swift for was I was frogging a lot of projects that I didn't really wear this year. Um, and when I do frog projects, when I unravel the yarn, I end up winding them into a hank form so I can soak them. Uh, so they become less ramen noodly and they just become a little bit easier to knit with. Your tension is just better. It's just a more enjoyable knit. So I was winding them or um, shaping them into hanks, soaking them, and then I would use my yarn swift to uh, wind them back into cakes that I could use to knit again. And also another reason why this is uh, my favorite tool is, I don't know if you can tell, it's a little bit more of an unconventional uh, tool <laughs> or yarn swift. Um, I showed it on my Instagram already. I made a reel because I had reclaimed yarn for my earth pullover. But this is a yarn swift that my dad made for me with our old dishwasher. <laughs> so it all started with this. I was telling my dad I want a yarn swift and he was like, I can make that. And so I was like, sure, like that would be great. My dad is a very handy and creative person. So I told him this at the beginning uh, of last year. And then in the springtime, we renovated our kitchen. Uh, and so we no longer needed our uh, 25 year old dishwasher anymore. And the dishwasher arm uh, that washes the dishes, it, like it spins like this. And so my dad was like, that can be part of your Swift. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't really see the vision. So after the initial piece was found, then he painted, which I appreciate, it was a nice touch. <laughs> he painted this plywood stick, I want to call it, or like a wooden stick dowel. I, I don't know any of this terminology clearly, but he painted it and then marked the center point for me. So I know where to put it um, on the turning piece here. And then he also drilled holes. So yeah, he made this piece which then stick into an old orange crate. <laughs> he drilled the hole here, then it sticks in the orange crate and then it works really well to spin. And oh, I almost forgot the last piece. And then I stick golf tee pins into these holes that he drilled for the hank to fit around. And so this is a favorite tool for me because of how nostalgic it is. I'm just really happy that my dad has taken an interest in in my hobby is always like so supportive of yeah all of the hobbies all of the things that I like to do um and so even though this is probably like not the most portable swift or uh professional looking swift I just want to keep using it because of how special it is to me and it did really come in handy for me this year all right and now moving on to podcasts so I want to it's it's kind of hard because I didn't really track which podcasts I watch the most, um, but I'm just basing it off of my judgment of which podcasts are released and which ones I try to prioritize the most. I am 
subscribe to quite a few knitting podcasts, but definitely when I see these podcasters um, come out with a video, I definitely am moved to the top of my um, list. I want to watch it right away. So that's how I kind of judge this category. So my top two were uh, first Knits by Mandy and second Handmade by Florence. So I'm sure that you've probably heard of these podcasters if you're watching this video, um, but just take this as I guess like some more uh, praise that I have and just a little bit more explanation of why I like their knitting podcasts. So the reason why I like Knits by Mandy, first off, I think she has like a great personality. She's so funny and I find when I watch her videos more often than, than not or probably almost every video I end up laughing out loud when, when watching her. She yeah she's just really funny and it always seems like you're catching up with a friend. It has a very casual relaxed vibe so I really like yeah, her personality. And the second is I really like the type of content that she comes out with. I think it's like a little bit more unique, her, her video ideas. Um, and they're a little bit different than like a more uh, traditional or standard knitting podcast. She does um, like knit and chats, uh, project vlogs. Um, she is doing a fun series called Cast and Stitches. Um, and then my personal favorite of her types of videos that she comes out with are her yarn window shopping videos. I just think, yeah, they're always really entertaining to watch and it's cool to hear other knitters perspectives on yarn choice, color, and why they may or may not purchase uh, a yarn. And my second top knitting podcaster is Handmade by Florence. I love following um, Florence and, and watching her videos because of the aesthetic of it all, I guess. I am always totally knit-fluenced every time I watch her videos. I feel like we maybe don't have the exact same sense of style, but a, a lot of her things I end up wanting to knit myself, so it's a nice way for me to get some inspiration for some nice basic neutral pieces. Um, and second is it's great to see some insight into her designing process. I really like all of her designs that she has come out with, like the mohair tie jacket, the fennel seed jacket are both designs that I want to cast on right away as soon as they're ever released. Um, I'm not really sure when the mohair tie jacket will be coming out or if it's still coming out, but definitely the fennel seed uh, jacket. I really like those designs so it's really nice to follow along and see the design from beginning to end and kind of hear more insight into the designing process. And she also does use a range of yarn um, types or I guess you could say like brands. She uses like more affordable yarn like drops and then more luxurious yarn yarns? <laughs> Larns? She uses more luxurious yarns um, and so it's nice to, to get that balance or mix as well and and kind of understand a little bit more of why she chooses the yarn that she did and a little bit more of a review of it as well. It's very helpful. And two new podcasts that I discovered this year. The first is uh, The Knitting Page. So Page I first like I guess met online through the Celine Top test knit. We both did that for Emma's Knits and then after that I discovered her YouTube channel and I think she's just um, like so refreshing to, to watch and, and listen to. She has a really bubbly and cheerful personality. She's also like very honest about her thoughts. Um, she does like knit, knit and chats which are really uh, nice to just um, settle down with while knitting and just hearing another knitter's perspectives on a wide range of topics. And a unique uh, video series that Paige does is her 321. So hopefully I'm going to try and remember it's three patterns, two designers, and one yarn. I, th I think I got that right. <laughs> but um, I think it's a really great way to learn a lot of information. I always watch those videos and uh, leave with a lot of inspiration from them and yeah I just really like the way that she talks about all of her projects and and um, some of the designers and, and why she's choosing projects. She also is my uh, inspiration for a brighter color palette. I love all the colors she chose. As I mentioned before, she was a co-host of the Summer of Pop Knit Along. Uh, and so I think if you like knitting with bright colors, then you should definitely check out her uh, channel and her Instagram because it's great inspiration. And the second new to me knitting podcaster that I really enjoyed this year is Tamara of Starcross Knits. 
Um, I just think she has such a funny personality. I always love her commentary on uh, many different things like the project she's working on, things that she did, uh, the designing process. She has a really good editing style as well. Like her videos are always really high quality. Um, and I am just thinking right now of her Rhinebeck video. If you want to check out her channel, that's the first video that I'd recommend to get a sense of like more of her personality uh, and also like maybe the types of yarn or projects that she does. Another reason why I really like listening to Tamara is because of her designing. So Tamara is also a knitwear designer and I just think everything that she comes out with is really creative and it uses really interesting techniques I would say like she freehanded I don't know if this is a pattern that's coming out I hope it is but she did like a star sweater a star color work sweater that I really enjoyed hearing the process of how she made that through her videos and she also has a lace silk top that's in testing or at least I think she's running a test for it right now if it hasn't already been released I probably should have checked that before but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still in testing I don't think it would have come out because I would have purchased it the the pattern um but I just really like hearing more about the design process um because I just think her pieces are so unique and that was my 2023 knitting wrapped video I really enjoyed this format because I think I was able to get more into some details of things that might not have popped up in my 2023 knits video so I'm gonna be filming that next week hopefully with better weather um it's it's just been so overcast outside and I want to film that on like more of a sunny day or hopefully I can film it on a sunnier day just to show off the knits a little bit more so yeah I haven't been able to film that yet unfortunately but it will be coming to my channel before I go I do want to give a little bit of uh update or announcement a news I don't really know what exactly to call it but I'm gonna be a guest on the Wooly Workers 12-hour charity knitting live stream that uh, Venetia of the Wooly Worker will be hosting on January 2nd. So Venetia is going to be uh, live streaming for 12 hours to celebrate her one-year podcast anniversary and also for charity so um, she'll be raising money in the the live stream for Samaritans which is a UK and Scotland based charity that provides emotional support services to people in crises or to people that want to speak with someone anonymously I think it's a really great charity I was looking it up um, when I was going to be a guest for the podcast when she had asked me if I wanted to. So I was looking up the charity. I thought it's a really great cause. I think they use the money very efficiently and effectively. So a lot of the money that's going to be raised is going to be used directly to support um, mental health services, which I think is great. Uh, and yeah, I think overall it's just a really great cause. I really hope that you can come on and see. So I'm going to be one of six podcast guests that are going to be appearing throughout the 12 hour live stream. And Venetia has also lined up several sponsors throughout the, the live stream. So hopefully there's like some incentive to come and join and, and donate. So I'm going to be on from, um, five o'clock GMT time or that's for me I live in Toronto Canada so that's 12 p.m um, EST Eastern Standard Time uh, I'll be on for 30 minutes and during our 30 minute time slot we're going to be doing two things first we're going to be um, running a knitting and fiber trivia quiz which I hope will be a fun and interactive activity for all of those who are going to be joining in um, we have a series of questions that are going to test your knowledge on knitting and, and fiber so there's that and then we're also going to be talking about our 2024 knitting plans which is going to be great for me because that is something that I want to get a better understanding of what are the projects that I really want to make next year so I'm hoping that the live stream can help me kind of brainstorm some of some of those projects so I'm going to include her um, post down below it's an Instagram post that just outlines some of the other podcasts the sponsors and more of a schedule of what's happening for that 12 hours and so hopefully if you're free that day I know some people still have January 2nd off um, from work or from school so hopefully you can join at least for for part of the stream if it's not during the time that I'll be there I'll I'm gonna try and join for other uh, podcasters and and other times as well um so yeah if you can't join at five o'clock gmt feel free to join for any of the other 12 hours that benicia will be streaming and yeah i'll i'll see you there 
So with that, uh, I'm gonna end this video. I had a lot of fun making this video actually. I really enjoyed being able to reflect on all the things that I made and I actually learned a lot about my design uh, and yarn and podcasting preferences and the reasons why they are the way that they are. So I encourage you to also do a 2023 knitting wrapped um, and just reflect on, on some of the things that you did this year as well. I thought it was really fun. So with that, I will see you in my next video.